All right. If we're going to talk about fracture mechanics, uh, the first thing we should probably talk about is this concept of a stress concentrator. A stress concentrator, meaning <clears throat> you apply a stress and somehow it's getting magnified. Why do we know that these exist? Well, early on they realized that these must exist because they could calculate the theoretical uh, force required to pull two materials apart. We did this in chapter two, right? You've got your force on this axis, and you've got your interatomic separation, R, over there. And we said for different materials, it, it, the curve looked something like this, right? So if this is your point when you're at equilibrium, right? There's no net force, R0. We knew that in order to pull these things infinitely far away, we would have to overcome some maximum force, right? Right, we can call this F max. If you overcome that force, then you could pull things infinitely away. And so from a theoretical perspective, that value that you should over, have to overcome is something like the modulus value, the Young's modulus, that's the stiffness of a material, divided by 10. However, in practice, experimentally, we observe that fracture occurs, occurs 10 to 1,000 times lower than this. You get fracture occurring way below its theoretical strength, right? The atoms, we know how strong that bond should be. But when we go and actually test these things in real life, they're much, much weaker. So what on earth is going on? Right. So this is what led to this idea of stress concentrators. This was put forward in the 1920s by A.A. A. Griffith, right? Uh, cool character. Um, so here's what he proposed. He said, all right, you've got flaws in your material, right? They might be on the surface, right? This is an example of a surface flaw right there. It has some half crack length of A. Or if it's in your material, then the total flaw is equal to 2 times the half crack length, okay? Half on the surface, 2A if it's in the bulk. In either scenario, you apply some stress to this thing, sigma naught. That's the force divided by area, right? Stress is equal to force divided by the cross-sectional area, right? Um, you think that's the stress that your material is experiencing, but what he proposed is he said, all right, in the vicinity of your crack tip, like for example, as you go between X and X prime, right, so right here between X and X prime, this is the stress that you thought you're applying, but as you get close to that flaw, it takes off exponentially. You see this dramatic rise, and at some point, right near the crack tip, you reach sigma M, which is the maximum stress. So right at the tip of the crack, you're going to have the largest stress is essentially the argument here. In fact, they calculated what it ought to be, right? The maximum stress, sigma m, should be equal to sigma naught. That's your applied stress. That's the original force over area. But multiplied by this quantity of 1 plus 2 times the square root of your half crack length divided by rho t, where rho t is your crack radius of curvature. So what does this mean? If you've got a material like this, with a big blunt crack, which has some half crack length A, since it's coming in from the surface, that should behave differently than if you're on the other side, you've got this scenario. In both cases, the crack length, half crack length A is the same, but in one case, this radius of curvature is large, and in the other, it's incredibly small. And so what they found is that a sharp crack um, leads to a higher uh, mag maximum stress in the vicinity of it. Okay. In fact, if you're in the in the limit of a over rho t being large, you can just you can neglect this term right there, and this simplifies to this expression. Your maximum stress is equal to two times your applied stress multiplied by the square root of the half crack length divided by the crack tip radius. Right. Now, another way to think about this is to just bring the sigma naught over is to divide both sides. Um, by sigma naught, right? If you divide this side by sigma naught and divide this by sigma naught, then you get this expression here. So this ratio of your maximum stress to your applied stress, sigma m, the maximum stress divided by the stress that you apply, is called the stress concentration factor, sometimes called the stress intensity factor, right? Think of it as like the multiplier. It's the multiplier of how much stronger uh, the stress is or how much greater the stress is in the vicinity of the cracks present in your material. Now, the question to consider for you as material scientists is then, why would cracks be so much more detrimental in ceramics as opposed to metals? Well, we alluded to this in our previous video. If you have this scenario here, right, you're applying a stress to this thing. You're pulling on it from the top and bottom, so it's under tension, right? As you pull on it, if it's a ductile material, this could deform. It could deform into that. So it can blunt that crack tip, and in doing so, 
it's going to be reducing the maximum stress. The maximum stress is going to continue to go down as you increase that radius of curvature, right? If your material will not tolerate deformation, then you can't get that reduction in stress, and so the crack tip um, remains sharp, and therefore your maximum stress remains large, and it's going to just crack and propagate through your material instead of propagating a little bit, blunting, and now arresting until more stress is applied. So that's the difference uh, why corners, voids, notches, cracks are so much more harmful in brittle materials is because they can't blunt that crack tip.